The mapping is of a real manor house, but for this purpose, it's a fictional area. This is Where's the Path 2, which shows you the manor house, the area and the footpath. Comparing on old maps and Google Maps side by side, you can see exactly where the footpaths used to run. On the overlay, you can change it to a, uh, there's a 1930s map available, uh, more or less the same. So we'll go back to the historical map and then you've got the side by side comparison, that blue area there. Is the area shown on the Google Maps. So looking at the side-by-side -side maps we've pulled up uh, an old one 1888 to 1913 and uh, if you look there on the old map there's a footpath that runs from that corner of the moated manor house and it runs across this field and joins up there and then continues across there along there but interestingly if you look on the old map it also runs diagonally across this field to that point there and then again you can see on the Google Maps there is actually a line across this field. Let's see if we can a line across this field from that point to that point. So that footpath there could be an area of interest. Also interestingly if you look how field shapes have changed, if you look at the old map on the left these fields along here, this one is now a large field that runs along the hedgerow, but in days gone by, in the 1888 to 1913 map, there is a divide on that field. So that field at some point has been two fields, <coughs> excuse me. Also interestingly, this one below this footpath here has been two fields it runs along to the railway and that footpath runs along there the footpath runs along there that's pretty interesting these field shapes have changed as well you look from there to there down there that's now one big field whereas before previously it was one two three four fields uh, it's our key UK. I'll put a link in the description to this site. There is there is a free version available. There's also a subscription. You pay yearly subscription. The information on this is unbelievable. So we'll have a look at that. Type in where we're going and we'll have a look. You get your main screen. You search a place you're looking for. Your postcode or your coordinates. You get an area to search. 3K, 5K, 10K. You can have all periods or specific if you're looking for specifics if you remember or subscribe type in your password in there search keywords and hit the search button your next screen you get the archaeological sites near the area you're searching a list of archaeological sites your old maps and later maps an old country map also all different types of finds what have been found in the area with a link to an aerial photograph of what's been found the next screen we've gone for this one so within three kilometers of our search area we get these finds and also a list of each and every one telling you what they are in the area so looking at the map in depth, you can see there is the area of the moated manor house. If you click on one of the icons, it tells you it is site 46. So if you look down for 46, medieval moated site, multi-period site, medieval moated site, post-medieval site of manor house. There's also another icon in the area that shows you 
gardens with footpaths, orchards, hedge and railways. That is on the field site that we looked at earlier. Also, another that moated site. Deserted medieval village. So this field also could be of interest. It's also showing. If we zoom back out. You can see there's lots of medieval in the area. Ancient site, small field system. Another moated site. Iron Age site. So this area potentially holds a lot of finds. Potentially. Looking at the LiDAR map, unfortunately for me, the area I'm interested in isn't covered with a LiDAR. But you can see, with the use of LiDAR, there's all sorts of information hidden away in detail on the map. We'll see if we can find an area with known um, hotspots. So just to come to an area to show you um, was a priory. That's how LiDAR works. You can see the outline of the priory there. And if you reduce the layer, the overlay, that's it. But basically LiDAR works alongside your other maps. Great. What three words then? Absolutely fantastic website, absolutely fantastic app. What you've got, this is the area we've been looking at. Um, the whole world is divided into three meter squares. We can zoom in. You can see the three meter squares in the area. Each one is assigned a different three letter word. Unique to that three meter square. So what we're going to do is follow this old hedge line. We know the start point. So we're going to create a waypoint. I've already done it. Livid, fencing, alienated. So we can save that as a save location. We can share it with a friend, you can share on Facebook, Twitter, share a link or email it and that's the link it sends, what three words, .co, livid, fencing, alienated. So all you've got to do, type it into the search bar at the top and it'll take you directly to that spot. You can also navigate to that spot with Google Maps, Uber, Waze, City Mapper or Bing Maps. What three words on your smartphone, either iOS or Android, it uh, will be able to share it with TomTom. Tom. So if you've got a sat nav and you say you want to get to that farmyard, you put it in, navigate, it comes up with the option to send it to TomTom, Tom, send it to your TomTom Tom, and it'll do that and navigate you straight to that farmyard. So to navigate to the farmyard, overruns, spurned ladders, Hit those little three dots there, or click on the three dots on the right. It'll bring up this screen to share with your mates to say, right, we're going to meet at this point. You can share with Facebook, Twitter, a link or email. It brings up the link, and all they've got to do is open three, the, uh, what three words, put that in, and you're there. It tells you there. You can also navigate Google Maps, you can send it to Google Maps and it will navigate you to that spot. You can also save your location, you've obviously got to sign in to save your location, but you can save all your locations and it comes up with that. I presume, I'm not 100% sure, but I presume if you go to your museum to see your flow, they will be more than happy with the rock three words fine point. I've yet to clarify that, but if they're not, then they're behind the times. Emergency services also using what three words. So if you've got the app on your phone, you find yourself in a bit of trouble in a field, stuck in, <laughs> stuck in mud, or even better, on the beach, you've got no mobile phone signal, you're screwed. <laughs> But no, all emergency services are using what three what three words. It is a fantastic app. If you've not got it, it's a must to get. First port of call for some people, final port of call for others. Historicengland.org.uk. It's a search site to find scheduled monuments and uh, of the like. So we typed in the area or the place we was looking at detecting 
you can see the actual moated manor house is a scheduled site so that area within the red box is out of bounds everything else we was we was looking at is okay to detect but uh, out of bounds in the box